What happens when two countries, oceans apart, find themselves on strikingly similar economic trajectories? Australia and Canada, often dubbed resource superpowers, offer a compelling case study. Both nations boast vast natural resources, enviable living standards and progressive social policies, yet both grapple with the pitfalls of their economic models. Dependence on volatile commodity markets, escalating housing crises and the looming threat of climate change. Australia and Canada have a long-standing relationship, influenced by their shared heritage as members of the British Commonwealth and constitutional monarchies. Both nations have relatively small populations that occupy a large geography. Can they leverage their shared experiences to chart a more sustainable and equitable path forward? Australia and Canada, while geographically distant, share a significant economic similarity their heavy reliance on trade with major global economies. For Australia, China is the largest trading partner, with exports to China comprising approximately 35% of the country's total exports. This reliance on China is driven primarily by Australia's robust mining sector, which supplies China with vast quantities of iron ore and coal. On the other hand, Canada leans heavily on the United States, with around 75% of its exports destined for its southern neighbour. This dependency is rooted in the integrated nature of the North American economy, facilitated by agreements like NAFTA and now the USMCA. Canada's primary exports to the US include crude oil, vehicles and machinery. While these trade relationships bring economic benefits, they also pose risks. Any economic or political instability in China or the US can have significant repercussions for Australia and Canada, respectively. Diversifying trade partners is thus a critical strategy for both nations to mitigate these risks and ensure long-term economic stability. Australia and Canada are lauded for their abundant natural resources. They lead in mineral extraction, energy production and agricultural exports. This wealth has driven economic prosperity, providing jobs and revenue. However, reliance on resources creates vulnerabilities. Their economies face boom and bust cycles of commodity markets. When global demand surges, economies boom, but when demand wanes, impacts can be severe. This volatility leads to job losses and economic hardship. In addition, over-reliance hampers economic diversification. Unlike most wealthy countries, investment in other sectors has lagged for several years. Breaking free from the resource curse is crucial for both Canada and Australia. And investing in education, infrastructure and innovation is key, if at all they look to compete on the global stage. The dream of home ownership is fading for many in Australia and Canada. Major cities have become notorious for sky-high property prices. Low interest rates and foreign investment have fueled an unsustainable housing bubble. Young people are priced out, forced to delay or abandon home ownership. Families struggle as a growing portion of their income goes to housing. The gap between the haves and have-nots widens, fueling resentment. According to the government's own expert council, Australia's housing crisis is set to worsen with significant shortfall in supply. The situation is even worse in Canada, with many residents considering to leave the country for better opportunities. The housing crisis is a social and moral issue. Both the country's governments need to step up and address the crisis with bold action, including more affordable housing and regulation. The environmental costs of Australia and Canada's reliance on extractive industries are undeniable. Mining, fossil fuel extraction and intensive agriculture have taken a heavy toll on their landscapes, ecosystems and climate. Australia is grappling with the impacts of coal mining on its iconic Great Barrier Reef, one of the world's most biodiverse ecosystems. The burning of coal for electricity generation is a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, exacerbating climate change and increasing the frequency and intensity of extreme weather events such as droughts, heat waves and bushfires. Canada too is facing the environmental consequences of its energy sector. The tar sands in Alberta, one of the world's dirtiest sources of oil, have been linked to deforestation, water pollution and habitat destruction. The expansion of oil and gas pipelines has sparked widespread protests from indigenous communities and environmental groups concerned about the risks to their lands, waters and livelihoods.
The pursuit of short-term economic gain from resource extraction is coming at the expense of the long-term health of the planet and the well-being of future generations. Both countries need to transition away from fossil fuels and embrace a more sustainable path that prioritizes renewable energy, conservation and ecological restoration. Inequality and social safety nets. While Australia and Canada boast high average incomes and living standards, these figures mask growing inequality. The gap between the rich and the poor has been widening in recent decades, fueled by globalization, technological change and neoliberal economic policies that favor the wealthy. This trend towards greater inequality has serious social consequences. It erodes social cohesion, fuels crime and social unrest, and undermines trust in institutions. Moreover, it leads to poorer health outcomes, reduced life expectancy, and lower levels of education and social mobility for those at the bottom of the income ladder. Both countries have traditionally had strong social safety nets, including universal health care, public education and social assistance programs. However, these safety nets have been weakened in recent years due to austerity measures and a shift towards individual responsibility. To address rising inequality and create a more just and equitable society, Australia and Canada must strengthen their social safety nets, invest in early childhood education, make healthcare more accessible and implement policies that promote decent work and living wages. A more equitable society is not only morally right but also economically sound as it fosters greater social cohesion, productivity and innovation. Diversification and innovation. The global economic landscape is undergoing a period of profound transformation. Climate change, technological disruption, geopolitical instability and the rise of protectionism are creating unprecedented challenges and uncertainties. For Australia and Canada, heavily reliant on resource exports and facing increasing competition from emerging economies, adapting to this new reality is paramount. Both countries need to diversify their economies away from volatile commodity markets and invest in innovation to remain competitive. This requires a shift towards a more knowledge-based economy with a focus on education, research and development and the commercialization of new technologies. Investing in renewable energy, sustainable agriculture and the circular economy will not only reduce their environmental footprint, but also create new jobs and economic opportunities. Furthermore, fostering a culture of entrepreneurship and innovation is crucial. This includes supporting small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, encouraging risk-taking and promoting collaboration between universities, research institutions and the private sector. Embracing digital technologies and adapting to the changing nature of work will also be essential for future economic success. Echoes of discontent, indigenous rights and environmental justice. The economic success enjoyed by Australia and Canada has come at a steep price for indigenous communities. Generations of colonization, dispossession and assimilation policies have left a legacy of poverty, inequality and social injustice. More than 1.8 million people in Canada identify themselves as an indigenous person, which represents 5% of Canada's total population. Indigenous peoples in both countries face significantly lower life expectancies, higher rates of chronic disease, lower levels of education and over-representation in the criminal justice system. Their land rights are often ignored and their traditional knowledge systems are undervalued. Moreover, indigenous communities are disproportionately impacted by the environmental degradation caused by extractive industries. Their lands and waters are often targeted for mining, oil and gas exploration and logging, jeopardizing their livelihoods, cultural practices and spiritual well-being. Achieving true reconciliation and environmental justice requires ensuring that indigenous peoples have a meaningful voice in decisions that affect their lives and territories. More efforts need to be taken to address the socio-economic conditions in their communities. Towards a just and sustainable future. The intertwined economic journeys of Australia and Canada offer valuable lessons for a world grappling with the challenges of the 21st century. Their experiences highlight the pitfalls of an economic model based on the relentless pursuit of growth. It's time for a paradigm shift, 
a move away from short-term thinking. Both nations need an economic model that values individual well-being over wealth accumulation. An aging population, escalating pressures in the health system and climate change pose long-term challenges for Australia and Canada's economic growth, living standards and government finances. The question is, which country will act on these problems? The future of Canada and Australia depends on it. So, what are your thoughts on this? Which country do you think will excel in the future, Australia or Canada? And why is that? Share your thoughts in the comments. Until next time, take care.